We're having a referendum to change the Australian constitution. This isn't like just bringing in a law. This is setting a permanent change that will affect all future laws made in our parliaments and our courts related to that part of the constitution. This is huge stuff. And we have a right to know and to ask, and we have a right to answers. Deputy Opposition Leader Susan Lay tried to ask some questions in federal parliament this week and got slapped down and jeered by Labor government MPs. My question is to the Minister for Indigenous Australians. Minister, what areas of public policy will not be within the scope of the voice? Order. The Leader of the Opposition will cease interjecting. The House will come to order. The Minister for Indigenous Australians has the call. Uh, can I thank the member opposite for her question um, and say that if she listened more carefully to the debate, she wouldn't have to answer that order. question. In relation to, order. In relation to uh, the role of the voice, we have been extraordinarily clear and we have listened to the aspirations of First Nations Australians uh, through an engagement group, through a working group, through many discussions on the ground in local communities, as well as the expert legal group. I have spoken at length with my colleagues and spoken at length with many people in this House. The answer to the question is that it is stated time and time again that the voice will concern itself with issues that directly affect First Nations people. OK, but that's the question. If it confines itself to matters concerning First Nations people, how do you define that? Don't all our laws affect First Nations people? I think it's this lack of clarity and the division that this will create between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians that's making so many Aussies think twice about the voice. Quite apart from the fact that most Aussies believe Aboriginal people are cared for and well represented enough already, and there's no need to mess with our system of government or constitution to this radical extent to help them. 11 members of parliament are of Aboriginal heritage and they got there on their own merit. That's nearly 5% of the parliament and the proportion of indigenous people in Australia is just over 3%. So there's no racial discrimination here. Not to mention all of the government funded at sea bodies and corporations. So how did we get here? The Voice is an idea that came out of the 2017 Uluru Statement from the Heart. Where did that come from? Well, it came from the First Nations National Constitutional Convention, a four-day meeting of 250 Aboriginal elders and other key figures in Aboriginal affairs. That four-day 2017 convention was run by the Referendum Council. So who's the Referendum Council? Well, they were 16 people who were appointed by Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull and the leader of the opposition Labor Party, Bill Shorten, back in 2015. Most of those 16 people, not all, but a significant majority could be considered to be left-wing or centre-left-wing politically. It would be very fair to say. They travelled around the country to meet with Aboriginal communities. How many did they meet with? 13. How many people was that? Around 1,200. 1,200 out of the 880,000 people in this country who identify as ATSI. That's how we got here. I've seen wider consultation processes for local council park renovations. This thing is about changing the Australian constitution. The Uluru Statement issued after the convention calls a First Nations voice to parliament to be set up and be enshrined in the Australian constitution. It also calls for a Makarata Commission to supervise a process of quote, agreement making and truth telling. Now that suggests some kind of treaty will be the next step. 
If you enjoyed that content, there's lots more where that came from. The Other Side Australia is back every Tuesday and Friday on ADH TV and all good podcast platforms. It's your weekly short circuit summary of the best news commentary from Australia and abroad. Don't miss it.